It has arrived. Ahsoka has finally arrived on the scene and has started off with a bang, a two episode premiere at the start of the series. In this video, we'll be covering episode one of the two episode premiere, breaking it down and rating it. So let's get straight into it. Hey everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be rating, breaking down and reviewing Ahsoka episode 1. So let's get straight into it. And we start off with the Red Scroll, different to that of the Skywalker Saga movies, where we are brought up to date with the current state of the galaxy. The story begins a few years after the de defeat of Darth Vader and the fall of the Empire. It's quite clear from the get-go that the main plot, at least for the first season, is that there are still remnants of people from the Empire left and they're trying to bring back Grand Admiral Thrawn from exile. It turns out he wasn't actually kin killed at the end of Rebels when Ezra sacrificed his own life to save, to save his friends and to destroy Thrawn. This means that Ezra probably also isn't dead as well, which could uh, set up some interesting plot lines coming forward. And the main person behind this effort is Morgan Elsbeth, who was also in Mando Season 2. She has a map which shows the location of Thrawn and where he is in exile. We start off with a huge Republic ship and the captain lets on a couple of mysterious figures who claim to be Jedi. Keep in mind this is a Republic ship. However, when we see them for the first time, it is clear that they are anything but. They withdraw their lightsabers, which are red, and murder both the captain and all the crew on board. The names of these Sith are Balin Skull and Shin Hati, his apprentice. Balin is a former Jedi who disappeared at the end of the Clone Wars and is accompanied by Shin, his apprentice. There are some pretty interesting things about Balin and Shin that you might not know. They don't seem like fully-fledged Sith who are fully committed as they don't just barge onto the ship and kill everyone in cold blood. They give them a chance. Also, since Balin was a former Jedi, it is very possible that he is also training Shin in both the dark and the light sides of the Force, suggesting maybe a tw tw plot twist could take place, involving a situation where maybe Shin turns to the light. You know, we don't know how many seasons of the Ahsoka, of Ahsoka could come out, so maybe all these things could happen in future seasons. But back to the episode. They end up fighting their way through the ship and free Elsbeth from her cell. Now, for me, I really enjoyed this scene. I thought it was a pretty cool first scene to get you gripped in the tension, and it certainly gripped my attention uh, to what is going on. Then we cut away to Ahsoka, who is on the planet Arcana. There's a reference to the Clone Wars here, more specifically the Night Sisters of Dathomir, a race of extremely strong witches. Arcana was a stronghold of theirs. Ahsoka, long story short, manages to get the map that leads to Thrawn by solving the puzzle, which she has to get to by twirling a lightsaber. So it was really cool to get underneath the plant well into the under underground she gets out of there but realizes she is not alone five hk droids are there ready to kill her and or maybe to take her in we're not exactly sure what they were there to do maybe they were there to kill her or just to capture her but we do get some brilliant action as Ahsoka obliterates them and is picked up by hu yang remember this droid you probably don't unless you are a clone war fanatic like me even though i had to look him up myself but basically hu yang was instructing jedi students for hundreds of years and now obviously with ahsoka and to be honest i really liked him snarky comments sarcastic just like k2so from rogue one if you ask me ahsoka then travels to the ship elsbeth was broken out of and meets up with harrison jeweler from rebels and fun fact she's actually even mongaro's wife wonder if we might get a little hello there somewhere down the line but back to the story Ahsoka can't open the sphere containing the globe, and Hera tells her that there is one person that can help her with this. Luke Skywalker? No, I'm joking, it's Sabine Wren. Which is cool anyway, and we see her first on the planet Lothal, with the muriel of the crew from Rebels behind her. Sabine, Ezra, Zeb, Hera, Kanan, and Chop, which is also a reference to Rebels. Now, this more seems like Rebels like Season 5 than it does... Uh, the Ahsoka series there is a lot focusing on the characters from the rebels here I thought it was pretty cool and she was going to give a speech to the crowd was Sabine about what how she helped to destroy the empire as, along with Ezra Bridger who's being honored but you know typical Sabine she's not there she's away on her speeder so back at Sabine's place we see an old hologram of Ezra speaking to Sabine where he mentions how he made sacrifices to defeat Thrawn then we cut away back to Elsbeth, Balin and Shin Elizabeth reveals, reveals that she was actually a witch, which, is, as we mentioned before, ties back to the Night Sisters of Dathomir. Shin Hati is then sent to Lothal to kill Sabine, who is Ahsoka's former apprentice. Yeah, this was pretty cool. Um, something that um could be explored as well further that Sabine was Ahsoka's former apprentice and was trained in the Jedi arts for a little while before they parted ways. And I think this effort by Shin was not exactly to kill Sabine. That wasn't their main objective. Their main objective was to draw Ahsoka out, if you will, 
for the, um so that they could get her. That's I think that's the person that they were going for. The atmosphere is pretty tense between Sabine and Ahsoka on board their ship, as there are clearly a lot of issues in the past between the two of them. Against Ahsoka's orders, Sabine takes the map back to her home to study it, and lo and behold, she actually manages to open it. I mean, who would have thought? We see that she was being tracked by a probe droid, which goes back to Shin Hati, revealing Sabine's whereabouts. Seriously though, why is it in Star Wars only the bad guys ever to get to use probe droids? Like when did the Jedi or the Rebels ever use probe droids? Never. But anyways, back to the story. Ahsoka, aboard her ship, is not happy with Sabine for taking the map as Hera tries to calm her. However, it becomes tense and Hera mentions how Ahsoka is probably like this for Anakin. And Ahsoka turns her back and says that Anakin never finished her training because she walked away. This is obviously a reference to the Clone Wars where she walked away from the Jedi after she completely lost faith in them after they... Uh, they said they were suspicious of her and they she was going to execute her for a crime that she didn't actually commit and it just made her lose all her faith in the Jedi order meaning that she left and she walked away from Anakin as well meanwhile on Lothal Shin ambushes uh, Sabine after she opens the map revealing coordinates as we said before Sabine was able to open the map to see where Throne was but Shin ambushed her before she could do anything with it Sabine draws her lightsaber the battle begins and Shin wins surprise surprise I mean come on what were you expecting does she be stood, Sabine stood a chance? Nope. She's stabbed right through by Shin, who gets away with the map. And that is it. The end of the first episode. And one thing about that final battle between Sabine and Shin, it did take a lot longer than you thought, since Shin is, you know, been trained obviously quite well by Balin in the art of the dark, of the Jedi and probably by the Sith as well. Uh, so I do think that she's been trained in both the Jedi and the Jedi arts and the dark arts, because you do see that she has a Padawan braid. Um, you can see her Padawan braid, which is something that Sith don't usually have. So it's obviously something referencing the Jedi. And since Balin, like I said before, was a former Jedi in the Clone Wars, this could mean something. Uh, so maybe they're not fully fledged Sith, and they're like they're in the middle. Balin and her, they're like in the middle. But yeah, Sabine, and I think that Shin was just toying with her. Really, she knew that she was going to absolutely destroy Sabine. Sabine, uh, yeah, she might be skilled with her lightsaber and had a bit of training, but I, seriously, like she's not. She's not amazing compared to Shin, who's been training for a long while. And in the end, she gets stabbed right through by Shin Hati. And that's it. that is it, like I said, the end of the first episode. Pretty interesting, if you ask me. And I really, really enjoyed it. I think Dave Filoni is doing an amazing, uh, amazing job. All right, so what did I think of it overall? Personally, I thought it was brilliant. A strong start to a series focused on my favourite Star Wars character of all time in Ahsoka. I'm really looking forward to next week's episode already. But since it was a two-episode premiere, the breakdown for episode two will be out soon, so make sure to look out for it. But until then, may the Force be with you.